prospect of going off-grid full-time is quite exciting. Being free to explore and move our home on a whim is a dream we've been striving towards this past year. It hasn't been the easiest journey to pull this vintage van out of the Arizona desert and it's been a long process to turn this shell of a vehicle into our new studio home. For ages it's just been a shell and now it looks like a home. Now we are more than ready for the adventure. I think this is a significant upgrade in seating position. However, it wasn't the best start to our new lives living off grid and on the move. Got to refer straight into our freaking front of the car. But whatever happens on this journey, it's life. And these are the challenges that we must overcome. Morning from the combi. Morning, first morning waking up in New Boomerang. It should be a really exciting morning, but instead we have to deal with what happened yesterday. And I don't know if we caught it on camera because it was really hectic, but somebody drove, backed into us as we were backing onto the ferry. Yeah. It was so, it was like, no, stop, what are you doing? And he just kept going and going. He was going quite fast. And before we knew it, we got hit. And it was all a rush. We had to just rush to get on, on the ferry. And then we couldn't really, like, see the damage properly because we had to get rushed up onto the deck. So it was not a good start to our trip. No, it wasn't a good start. But at least the first ding, major ding into Boomerang is not our fault. Um, so that's a plus. I was pretty pissed last night, um, but, you know, it, it could be worse. Yeah, no one got hurt, which is good. And this is probably the first of many little scuffs that we're going to have in the car because we do spend a lot of time on the road and driving. So hopefully this is first and no more. <laughs> yeah. No more accidents. It is a, a small thing in the grand scheme of things, but, you know, when you spent so long restoring a van and you're finally on the road and ready to go exploring you expect to at least get 10 miles before your first ding yeah <laughs> we kind of have to laugh about it i feel so for ben because it's like he's put such <laughs> hard work into it and it's happened to you before with capito right yeah when i spent five months restoring capito i got out and i was like kept on waiting for good weather to take a picture of the completed bus and on the sixth day after leaving the mexican garage somebody went into the front of, of Capito and dented the front. So, same thing. Apparently, it's just meant to be. <laughs> so, um, today our plan is to... We're going to check out the damage and try to call the guy's insurance company. Or yeah. the, the boss, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we literally... The guy wouldn't give us any details. He's like, you've got my license plate number. I'm like, gee, thanks, buddy. He was being really uncooperative and... Yes, and yeah. not very apologetic. Time to put some finishing touches on Boomerang. And go exploring. Finally. Can't wait. Driving on the open road in our new studio was liberating. But we really wanted to take care of the damage to Boomerang's face. So we headed up to see Ben's family in Liverpool. Having connections in Liverpool was key here and we owe a big shout out to my cousin Steve who pulled a miracle and managed to get Boomerang booked in for some panel beating and a respray. In the meantime, well, it wouldn't be a trip to Liverpool without a tour of the home of the world's most famous band. This is Paul McCartney's house. Would you believe it's just two minutes down the road? So whose house is this, Ben? Georgie. George who? Harrison. <laughs> Not Harrington? No, definitely Harrison. 
friend mum was telling us a story about how she went to Ringo Starr's house mm -hmm. when she was younger and um, she knocked on the door and Ringo's mum came out and she'd been baking and she had flour in, on her hands and she said I asked her if Ringo was in and she said he's not in love, he's in London and then as I was about 11, 12, maybe 13, no 13 he actually, she, I just went, oh, okay, and went as if I was calling for a friend. <laughs> this is Ringo Starr's house. Ben's mum actually thought that it wasn't here anymore, but it's still here. This is where she knocked on the door when she was younger to try and find Ringo Starr. <laughs> so cute. She was too embarrassed to come and do it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John Lennon, childhood home, the last of the Beatles. This one's the nicest home, I think. This was actually where he's, he lived with his aunt. So he didn't live with his mum, because I think she was a bit of a drinker. So she, he grew up in his aunt's home, which is this home here. I had Beatles song in my head all day today, all different ones. <laughs> I can't get them out of my head. I've got Yellow Submarine in my so head. So do I! So How frustrating. Do I know, there's so many better songs. <laughs> we all live in a... <laughs> Before the Beatles lyrics had faded from our ears, Boomerang was back and looking better than ever. Still, there is a couple of things missing. The first major item preventing us from going off-grid is up the top. Today we have a mighty task, quite exciting task. Yeah, our solar panels finally arrived today. There's one of them. Yeah, they actually came really, really quickly in Jersey. They were really expensive to get sent there. Here, it was free delivery and next day delivery. So I know. that was really handy. Absolutely insane after months of waiting weeks at a time for something to arrive. To see something arrive the very next day, less than 24 hours later, was quite astonishing. You guys are probably used to that, but we're not. Um, so we have to get that solar panel onto this roof and we have to get uh, another solar panel onto the back as well. We'll show you what we've got going on. Um, eventually, we would like them to be tiltable, so, um, but we won't be dealing with that here. We just need to get these solar panels on top of our bus. It's so exciting, and then we can go off grid. This is our 120 watt panel, which is going to be going on the front um, part of the bus, front of the roof. How big's the back one? The back one's huge. How many Two, watts? 250, is it? I can't believe it. High five. The 250? Yeah. Ben has been out there all day from about 8 o'clock this morning. It's now about 8.15 at night. And he's still out there working on the solar panel. He's such a hard worker. New manual, check. Take note of how clean this manual is now. In a few years time, at the end of the trip, it's gonna be in pieces. <laughs> Just like the last one. <laughs> yeah. New adventure, really new manual. New fire extinguisher, check. Flooded combi. Ugh, shit. I'm in trouble. I'm in such bad trouble. I flooded the combi. I've completely flooded the combi. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know, there must have been a pipe somewhere. Where did it come from? I thought maybe we'd have a bath. Where did it come from? They're from here somewhere, I guess. Flooded so bad. Damn, I hate plumbing. Why is it so complicated? It looks easy. <gasps> Pretty bad.
good news is at least the leak is gone from the other place. Bad news is I wasn't expecting it to get as far as this. It wasn't even supposed to come out there. In hindsight, I really should have looked to see if the shower was turned off before I activated the water system. Hopefully, the carpet here doesn't mould. It's now time to test this solar system and finally get off grid. I can't wait for this. Camping, off grid, yeah. nature, bring it on. Finally! <laughs> We've waited a long time for this place. No, let's go. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Come on, Han. Shall we? Wait, I'm driving. But before we do that, there is one final task. Let's face it, it is well overdue. We're christening Boomerang. I christen the World Explorer Boomerang. Finally, Boomerang. You're dressed for the occasion. Ready for an adventure, babes? Are you ready for an adventure, Boomerang? Now we look at the past. Time for one of our really uncoordinated happy dancers. We just loaded up with supplies for the first time. We are headed off to somewhere, hopefully a little remote, a little bit of nature. Um, we spent almost 200 quid on pots and pans and um, food and stuff. So it was a massive shop for us and we thought we'd never fit it in, but unbelievably, Leah has done like, how it used to have masterful um, Tetris skills and we still have space. It's not even packed that well at the moment and it's still, we have loads of space left over. So, uh, got all of this food should last us a while. Plus the fridge is full. Now we have knives and forks and stuff to actually make food with. So it's time for us to go off grid. This has been a long time coming. Take back your weather and bring me the skies On a day so bright I can't open my eyes And days like this is where we We are in Lancaster and um, it's uh, quite a good free camp spot for our first night, our first proper night on the road. And surprisingly beautiful, I have to say. Didn't expect it to be this beautiful. And we'll stay out here making most of the sun until our two shadows point all the way home <laughs> Welcome to uh, the UK. This is our first free campsite, our first campsite, and it was free, and it was a pretty good one. Lucky we found it last night. You're the best at this. I know. I actually cheated and used an app called Park for Night, which is, I think, an app we're going to be using throughout the UK and Europe, because I, Overlander, for some reason, don't have as many spots, but we found this one through that app, and I think we're going to be using that one from now on, because it's a pretty good... Look at that. Not a bad garden for the day. In the night time, the tide has been up and gone back out again. There is a road just behind us. Um, it's quite noisy, but apart from that, it's a pretty good spot. Um, and today we are off to first going to a mobile store to get internet because 
we need why wireless internet so that we can make videos and upload them to YouTube. Yes, yeah, so what we're going to be doing is uh, in every country we go to, we're just going to be getting a SIM card with unlimited Wi Fi um, for our work and video uploads and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and then we're going to be off to the lakes. Lake District. The Lake District. Yeah. It's going to be good. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, and it's going to be nice today and it's going to be raining tomorrow. So we're going to get there as soon as we can and enjoy the lovely sunshine today in the UK. You can say that I was blind, but now, now I can see. We found another free camp spot in the Lake District. It's quite beautiful, so we're going to be uh, flying the drone. Beautiful here. Bit windy. <laughs> we could fly the drone here if we never wanted to see it again. Maybe we'll wait for the wind to die down. Oh yes. Hang on. Wait. Oh. 95% complete. I think we can we I think we can even step this up another another notch. If we but uh Oh hang on. Shit, I'm never gonna live in a house again. Nice view you got there, Ben. Of you? Of the lakes behind you? Yeah. You should probably go out and, and walk around and I'm just enjoying the combi so much. Everyone else is going for hikes and we're like, nope. We're just sitting here for a minute, have a cup of tea, enjoy the combi. Oh, yes. The wind has finally stopped this morning. It was howling last night, but we woke up to a very calm day today. Super calm. And all you can hear are these beautiful birds. Not a bad morning view, not a bad morning view at all. The Lake District of North West England is a popular destination for locals and visitors alike, and with good reason. The mountainous and forest region is speckled with gorgeous lakes and it's an outdoor lover's paradise. Even in a small country like England, there is plenty of rugged nature to explore, so we set off to find a slice of wilderness to claim as ours for the day. Okay, maybe we'd be sharing it with a sheep or two. On the way back down, we spotted an old abandoned building off the trail, and we couldn't leave until we had scoped it out. We spotted this old stone house up here. Let's go check it out. It turns out that this area, the Old Man of Coniston, was home to some of the largest slate quarries in England. And mining in this area dates back 800 years. But we're guessing this building is not quite that old. So the water, these, these metal, rusty old metal water lines that we've been following up the mountain come to here, and there's a waterfall over there, and the water must have come down to here. This obviously generated electricity then. So 
Well, like 1920s, I'm guessing. It turns out that this abandoned building was once a blacksmith's and power station for the nearby slate quarries. This whole roof of this building has collapsed in, completely gone. It's a cool building though. This building is going to be here for literally thousands of years because it's just rocks piled on rocks and it's not going anywhere. Like the elements are not going to tear this thing down. Like the wooden roof is gone. The, the, the metal won't last that long, but the walls of this building are going to be here for a long time. I don't know about you guys, but we love exploring abandoned places like this. As with much of the UK, but particularly here in the lakes, the weather can change quite quickly and it looks like it was going to change for the worse. I can tell you right now that van life in the rain sucks and we were about to get more than our fair share of it. But that is a story for next time. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you're subscribed so that you can follow the adventure as we attempt to drive around the world. For those of you who want to join the Combi Crew and get access to 150 unlisted posts, check out the Combi Crew link below. Thanks for your support.